It is February the 11th, 2018, and it's a Sunday morning. Sunday, 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 drag racing. Uh, so I am finally getting around to a video that I've kind of teased a couple of times. If you remember my Ghostbusters scrapbook, then uh, I said that I was going to do a video on this topic right here. 555-2368. That, of course, is the phone number of the Ghostbusters. Well, sort of. In the first film, uh, the phone number is 555-2368. As you can see on my prop replica, uh, I said, I really wish that I had like a vintage typewriter so that it was struck with actual keys of the era to put that in there. And uh, my buddy Pete in Wisconsin, he's a lawyer. He goes, gotcha. His dad uh, had a, a vintage typewriter that he had uh, put in his office. And so uh, it, it still functioned and everything. So he did me a whole page of 555 on a typewriter and then stuck it in the mail and snail mailed it to me. So I cut those out to, to go in this one. And in, of course, she has the 20 line phone later in the film, as you've probably seen in my uh, Janine 14 video. I know the Ghostbusters have other telephones. In the sequel, uh, on the car, it says JL5 2020. I'm not sure why they changed it from one movie to the other. But doesn't 2020 sound like it would be the phone number of an optician? And speaking of opticians, did you know that before he got into politics, Palpatine from the Star Wars movies was an optician? I swear, I swear. That's how he came up with that slogan. You will pay the price for your lack of vision. I think in other stuff, there's been like different, uh, you know, phone numbers, 212 no ghost and whatever from the novels and the cartoons and everything. So today, let's just concentrate on 555-2368 because that's the relevant one. On the little note there, the next film you saw in the list was Howard the Duck. Yes, I've seen Howard the Duck. Yes, I own it on Blu-ray as well. Although in my defense, I've never opened the Blu-ray. Here's the thing about Howard the Duck, since you obviously know I'm a Star Wars fan because of that last joke. Howard the Duck came out at a point in time where we Star Wars George Lucas fans had no idea that he could do anything bad. You know, it's like Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Return of the Jedi. These movies just boom, 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 boom. Could do no wrong. And we all go, Howard the Duck, yay! And we sit down in the movie theater and it's kind of like being on a date with somebody that you should have hit it off with. But there you are, on the date, and you're not enjoying it, and you can't undo it. You're already there on the date, you know? So yeah, so we all saw Howard the Duck back in the 80s. There, there, there was no stopping us. And then on the little list there, I started jotting down stuff like uh, uh, Ordinary People. Apparently I saw it in that. And then I saw it in uh, an AT&T flyer. And then I saw it in this Carol Kane movie where the killer's in the house. I didn't know what the title of the movie was. Carol Kane movie killer in house. Oh, When a Stranger Calls. I started seeing it in other stuff, Far and Away, an AT&T commercial from 1993. And it was like, whoa, this thing's in a lot of stuff. The one that I'm surprised it took me so long to find because my parents were huge fans of James Garner. So I love the Rockford Files and my parents, as I said, were big James Garner fans. My mom particularly liked the movie Tank. Uh, so, because her dad drove a Sherman tank in, uh, in World War II. We watched a lot of Rockford Files, and every episode you would see the slow pan across the desk to the phone, and it would always say 555-2368. So, some years go by, I get on GB Fans, and I created a thread on this topic, and some people, of course, remembered the JL5 2020 number better than the 555-2368 number, and some people said they were going to call 8675309. I said, hey, at least keep it Dan Aykroyd centric and call 6345789. Uh, Blues Brothers 2000. But I started looking online and then I found references to even more of these things. Lots of television programs had used this phone number. Uh, the Bionic Woman had used it in an episode. The phone number can be seen in a 1971 episode of The Mod Squad entitled And the Children Shall Bleed Them. Matter of fact, it goes back to the Twilight Zone. Oh wait, that's the movie Twilight Zone. Well, you wanna see something really scary? 
Twilight Zone the series. Now, it's not actually in this uh, fan favorite compilation that my sister gave me, but there is a fifth season episode of The Twilight Zone called Night Call. 1964 centers around an elderly woman who keeps receiving disturbing phone calls. This is all on a website that I found. You can see on the rotary dial, it's Klondike 52368 or KL5. 555-2368. So that's the earliest one we found. It can be seen in the Mannix episode, Memory Zero, when he has to dial it on a payphone. Mannix, Kojak, Beretta, Hunter, Rockford. It seems like a lot of detectives use this telephone number. And then in the thread on GB fans, which by the way, if you Google the phone number 555-2368, it's the first thing that pops up. Uh, you get an excerpt from the Wikipedia was provided by Kevin J319. It says the number 2368 is a carryover from Exchange 2368, which was the numerical version of Exchange Central. So this thing was used by the phone company in advertisements for decades. I found a few of them online, so here we go. No, I have no more information about that particular photo. I found an earlier article on proton charging about this very same topic before they realized that it was a phone company thing and they just thought it was like movie prop guys making a reference to one another. Some of the other titles that I found in online searches included the movie Forever Young. It was in some program called Jane Austen's Mafia, a 1965 film called A Patch of Blue. It was the hotel room in Memento, a real estate sign in Along Came Polly. It was the Guiler residence in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. July 20th of 2012, I was watching Gremlins 2 The New Batch on Blu-ray for the first time, and I spotted the phone number on Daniel Clamp's desk. Now, you guys may be thinking, gee, sometimes I think Alex might just be a Gremlins fan. How big of a Gremlins fan am I? Well, when I went to New York City in 2014, it wasn't just Ghostbusters locations that I was there to film. 101 Park Avenue better known as the Clamp Center. So in Gremlins 2, Billy uses Daniel Clamp's telephone to capture the electric gremlin, which, now that I think about it, sounds like a really horrible make of car. And when they zoom in on the telephone, you can see the number 555-2368. On my birthday, 2014, four years ago, uh, I spotted it in the season ender for the first series of The Greatest American Hero, and uh, Ralph uses the suit to sort of like see a hologram of a phone number and the dial appears in the middle of the screen. It's kind of hard to spot in the, in the frame grab. The cool thing was, earlier in the same episode, this is sort of like my story uh, about the, uh, the Friends episode, I spotted actor Michael Ensign in that episode of Greatest American Hero, and he was playing the principal at Ralph's school. Although in later episodes, a different actor played the principal, so maybe Michael Ensign got fired. I don't know. September 21st, 2016, I spotted it in an old Bob Newhart episode, originally airing December 1977. He's on the phone, he tells his wife what the phone number is. Here's the thing. That show was co-created by Lorenzo Music, who was the original voice of Peter Vinkman on the Real Ghostbusters cartoon. Here's one of my favorite ones that I found just a couple of years ago. It was this screen that came up on AOL. And not only does it have the 555-2368 on it, but the, the first big sentence that you see, I swear I can hear in Bill Murray's voice. Hold on, this is important. So we know the phone number has been in use at least since the Twilight Zone days and earlier thanks to these old telephone ads. Uh, and I'm sure there are many more instances of it out there than the ones I've collected for this video. So if you see some more, let me know. Maybe someday we'll have a, a master list of these things. Here's one interesting thing in a conversation with Matthew Wilson the, the other day. He asked me, did I think possibly it was a typo and they wanted it to be 3286 instead of 2368? And I said, what's that? And he said, that would have spelled ecto. Oh, that's a really cool one. I, uh, thank you for noticing that, Matthew. So, um, yeah, with all these possible people that you would reach if you dialed the number 555-2368, how do you ever know who you're going to get? That's why we have area codes. And when they zoom in on the phone, you can see the number 2368. And when they zoom in on the telephone, you can see the number 555-2368. Why are you repeating yourself? I'm doing. I'm gonna fix it in the edit. Thank you, though. You might have just made the outtake real. <laughs>